morning and welcome to St. David's online service. I'm Ben Bailey and I'm the vestry person of the day. For any first time guests, welcome. Please sign our online visitors card on the St. David's Roswell app or at our website, stdavidchurch.org. Please access the app or other channels for upcoming announcements about events and programs for the future. We're ready and excited to welcome everyone back with in-person services at 8, 9, and 10.30 for the summer. And the nursery is open for, not, for the 9 and 10.30 services. The women's retreat will be held from October 1st through the 3rd at St. Mary's in Swanee, Tennessee. Registration is now open, and you can register through the St. David's app or our website. Thank you for joining us for virtual worship, and have a great day. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to, to you all, all hearts are open, all, all desires, desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the millow inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. The word of the Lord. The passion for today, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, is Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised, and the city of our God is his holy hill. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth, is the hill of Zion, the very center of the world and the city of the great king. God is in her citadel. He is known to be sure, her sure refuge. Behold, the kings of earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in childbirth, like ships of the sea when the east wind shatters them. As we have heard, so we have seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God has established her forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgment. Make the circuit of Zion walk round about her. Count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds. And you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. And he shall be our guide forevermore. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. 
So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. 
and he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about the village teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They called out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, as I was meditating on the lessons appointed for today, I was also going through resumes of candidates and preparing for interviews for our director of youth ministry. I found some interesting intersections, and it got me thinking about what our resumes might look like. So I'd like to invite you to do a creative exercise with me today. And imagine writing your spiritual resume. My hope is that this exercise might help us to know ourselves better, to think about new ways where we might engage in ministry, and open ourselves to knowing and trusting God a little more. You can close your eyes if you want to. I'm going to guide you through visualizing this in your mind. And as long as you don't snore, we won't accuse you of falling asleep. If you're watching from home, obviously, you could pause and go get some paper if you wanted to write this down. Begin with writing your name at the top of the center of the page. Next, add your address, email, and phone number. Now, for the first heading of your spiritual resume, you can name it flesh and blood or family lineage. And I want you to trace your family back to Adam and Eve or at least try to name every blood relative that's descended from King David. We're short on time now, of course, so you might want to come back to this a little bit later. Then, think about all the education you've received as a follower of Christ. All the Sunday school classes you've attended, your baptism preparation, maybe there was a first communion class, Name all the Bible studies, book studies, and Christian formation classes you've participated in. And if you can, for fun, try to calculate the number of sermons you've listened to in your life. Under the next section, list any significant life experiences you've had. You could go ahead and award yourself an honorary degree if you feel like you've mastered prayer, generosity, forgiveness, conflict management, family dynamics, church governance, marriage or parenting, or organizing church events. Next, list all the outreach or spiritually mountaintop experiences that you've had, mission trips or helping out at vacation Bible school, feeding the poor, visiting shut-ins, trips to Camp Michael, retreats like Happening or Curcio. Under the next section, identify all of your special skills and talents that benefit the church and the world. Maybe leading, teaching, organizing, scheduling, fundraising, serving, singing, playing a musical instrument. And finally, name a few significant people in your life who have had a role in your spiritual development family members, friends, co-workers, and your clergy who could speak to your spiritual maturity. Add them under the heading references. Make sure it all fits on one page and you're done. How are you?
Are you impressed with yourself? Would you hire you? Are there things that are missing? Before we get too proud of ourselves, let's take a little closer look at the things that we might boast about and consider Paul's advice to the church. In fact, let's go ahead and edit this for Paul. In Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, it's obvious Paul is trying not to boast, and he points repeatedly to his weaknesses. So go back to your resume and cross off anything that you've done for God that you felt strong or confident doing because you received adequate training and preparation for. Next, delete everything listed under special skills and talents. Those don't really matter to Paul either. Instead, add a section called hardships and list every experience you've had in life with grief or pain or suffering and all the times you were ridiculed, persecuted, or taken advantage of because of your faith. Now add all the times you stepped out of your comfort zone and did something that you felt foolish even considering. List any experiences you knew you didn't have the knowledge, strength, wisdom, or skill to do on your own. Those times you were completely dependent on God to get you through. Move those to the top of your resume and put them in bold. Add your biggest weaknesses and your resume is complete. You've just created a resume for the Apostle Paul that the Apostle Paul would be proud of because it testifies not about who you are, but about who God is. It speaks to your willingness to let God work through you. And while I don't always see eye to eye with Paul, I have to admit that he actually does have a point here. Even though throughout this letter he contradicts himself about boasting, and was obviously triggered into some strange competition by people claiming to be apostles but were actually attempting to mislead his young church. Paul had a powerful, life-changing encounter with Jesus, and through that he learned important lessons about God's grace and how God uses us and the struggles we face in life. I know so many of you have learned this from difficult experiences in your lives, too. I don't know about you, but I find it equally comforting and challenging to accept these paradoxical truths about how God works. Boasting about our weaknesses goes against everything society teaches us. Our natural tendencies is to look for our strengths and talents the things we know about and contribute those things to building up God's kingdom rather than the things we are inadequate or weaken. In. Another paradoxical truth that goes hand in hand with accepting our weaknesses comes from the gospel lesson today. Mark tells us that Jesus sends out his disciples with power and authority, but tells them to take nothing on their journey, no bread, no money, no change of clothes. He wants them to be dependent on the people who they go to share the good news with, which is also contrary to how most churches think of doing missionary or charity work. We tend to think of a group of people who are abundantly blessed giving to those who are not. It's a one-way relationship, but that's not how God wants it. Jesus wants there to be mutuality and equality in the giving and receiving his disciples enter into. All of this is good news for us. God doesn't need strong, perfect people with impressive resumes and loads of money to change the world on their own. God needs imperfect people like you and me who know they need God and want to follow the example of Jesus and work with others to help people who are hungry to be fed, for those who are lost to be found, for those who are sick to be cared for, for those who are lonely to be visited. 
as we have begun the joyful work of resuming our regular services and ministries that were impacted by the pandemic, it's become clear that St. David's needs new volunteers to help us get back on track. So while we celebrate our nation's independence today, I invite you to paradoxically celebrate St. David's dependence. Dependence on imperfect, weak, foolish people like the Apostle Paul and Jesus' disciples, people just like you and me, who have the courage to raise our hands to help and serve God's people, not because we have impressive resumes that boast about our skill sets, our education, or experience, but because we have had our lives changed by the power of God's love and grace, and we can't help but want to share the good news so that so many others can experience it as well. Amen. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will we'll come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead and the, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve this common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that may, may lose, use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that may we serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation. Almighty God, giver of all good things, 
We thank you for the natural majesty and beauty of this land. They restore us, though we often destroy them. Heal us. We thank you for the great resources of this nation. They make us rich, though we often exploit them. Forgive us. We thank you for the men and women who have made this country strong. They are models for us, though we often fall short of them. Inspire us. We thank you for the torch of liberty, which has been lit in this land. It has drawn people from every nation that we have often hidden from its light. Enlighten us. We thank you for the faith we have inherited in all its rich variety. It sustains our life that we have been faithless again and again. Renew us, Lord. Help us, O Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime and hasten the day when all our people with many voices in one united chorus will glorify your holy name. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, and thank you for worshiping it with us at St. David's online again. We hope that you have a wonderful week. We um, would like to extend this special birthday blessing to anyone who's celebrating a birthday. God's blessing to you. God's blessing to you. God's blessings, beloved. God's blessings to you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through your prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his, his death. death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await, await his, his coming, coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with David and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Oh. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Gracious God, we ask your blessing on everyone who participates with us in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.